of Red Wings rant where tirades and impassioned pleas about your Detroit Red Wings finally have a home. Uh, Mike, as always, uh, we have some things that we talk about right at the beginning of every episode, and I forgot to send you the brand new script, so I'm sending it right now. Uh, so keep an eye out <laughs> your email. We'll definitely do that. Uh, Boy, also, love talking business. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the rest of the episode, we'll be talking about the uh, UFAs and RFAs for your Detroit Red Wings. Uh, we have some uh, salaries we'll take a peek at and uh, decide if they're going to stick around. Are they here for the long haul? Are they tradable? Uh, we'll have some fun. And we're also going to celebrate that the Red Wings might finish the season above 500 against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Of course, you're listening to this now. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, which would be Monday when the podcast goes live, uh, that means you already know, uh, but it's fun to think about. Uh, so, Mike, you give me that thumbs up when you get that sweet ass email. <laughs> hey, <laughs> time for some business. All right, time for some business. That's what the people tune in for. None of this hockey talk. Let's hear what DraftKings has for us. This week's no exception. <laughs> the hits literally keep on coming. Bingo, bingo. From one boxing event to the next, they grow in excitement. And anticipation in this weekend. Wait, it's no different. Wait, I just said that. With two of the sport's most respected fighters stepping into the ring Saturday to play chess. Oh, no, looks like they're going to box. My God. Oh, man. man. There's no better place to get in on all the action than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. It's true. Google it, top-rated sportsbook app. Just waiting for Xfinity to catch up. Okay, it's true. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Matt, this weekend's fight, DraftKings is offering all new users a shot at turning $1 into $55. Matt, that is basically a PlayStation game. Very excited to hear that. To celebrate this weekend's huge event, DraftKings Sportsbook is offering new users the opportunity to get 55 to 1 odds on either main event fighter to win this weekend's fight. That's about $1 if the fighter of your choice wins in cash. $55. Plus, with basketball and hockey playoffs right around the corner, DraftKings Sportsbook has even more ways for you to make it rain. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, oh, not wait, anymore. It's got a new theme song. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook is safe, secure, and reliable, <laughs> meaning you can deposit, withdraw your funds at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code THPN when you sign up. For a limited time, all new users can bet $1 to win $55. On this weekend's main event, that's right, DraftKings Sportsbook is going all out for new users by offering them the chance to win $55 when placing a bet of $1 on this weekend's big fight. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Woo! See. Woo! Beautiful. All right. Woo! Who's ready to talk some? Red Wing Power Play! Or at well, least just yeah. Let me, let me take care of one more bit of business because uh, no, ah. we're not we're not going live on Twitter anymore. We got to tell the folks that we actually did go live. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, we're we're live right now. <laughs> like, uh, what, was, what was that guy's name that did the sports center? Right now. Right now. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. All I can remember is the sound. I don't remember the face. Yeah, I, I want, like, the first name that came to mind was Bucciagratz, but that's probably because I like hockey and I know it wasn't Bucciagratz because he just says college hockey. I, what? I know, I just know it wasn't Stuart Scott. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. You got that one right. We um, narrowed it down. It's not Bucci. It's not Stewie. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, man, a lot of big news. Uh, I don't know where you want to start. You want to keep talking about uh, the Red Wings dominate? Well, not domination, but we're we're formidable against the Lightning. Uh, we've not we, we haven't won the series, but you know this season, uh, I don't think you could be upset about being three three and one against the champs. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, well, uh, I think we can uh, pull this up here. It. Uh... Nope, can't pull it up. All right, I got to go in a different route. I was going to go through the list of uh, how, how the season's gone so far uh, against the Lightning, because I think we started 0-3, and, and we made quite the turnaround. Um, let's do it. All right, first, yeah, here we go. We went, uh, we lost 5-1, to then 3-1, to then in overtime, 4-3. to So that's 0-2-1. We win 6-4 to in March. Uh, then we go down again to only 2-1. to So... 
now we are uh, at that point one, three, and one. And Mike, we've got the five to one victory back uh, almost a month ago, April fourth. Yeah. And now, Mike, your favorite month of the year, uh, May first. We win one to nothing. We've got the last game coming up. What a comeback, Mike! <laughs> yeah, quite the underdog though, story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we talk about uh, being above five hundred, so that that puts us, you know, at three, three, and one. So technically, that's three and four. Uh, but above five hundred in the point. Three, three, percentage. and one looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. It looks um, like five hundred. Considering Mike, no, <laughs> no Larkin, no Bertuzzi, um, and <clears throat> you know, Mike, if we go by uh, Red Wings Twitter, it is absolutely um like the only way you can win is to build chemistry and never change the lines for a hockey team so by that could you can you see how amazing verana's doing uh because he had to change his whole team he didn't just change his line and he's still doing great so yeah. again remember everybody according to red wings twitter skill means nothing uh your your background means nothing it all depends on how your coach develops you so uh by that account Verona is the greatest player of all time because of how he's produced after changing the whole team. So uh, you got to throw that in there. <laughs> Dunk. All right. <laughs> Look again. I, I was actually we were just talking. I was just talking with Jesse, um, our, our blogger for the site. Yeah. And I said it's not about uh, telling anybody that you know there, there's something that is black or white. It's about creating these ideas that put the the you know the reasonable doubt for someone to go. Oh, you know, I might not be right to just say that there's only one way to think about coaching or development or player skill. That's all. That's all we're trying to do. Let's create some reasonable doubt. Um, Mike, you sent me something in the chat. Oh, you said where's the ad? Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. In a panic before the show started, I was like, oh no. Um, <laughs> all right. So you can tell I'm excited. I'm actually I'm going on five hours of sleep right now, Mike, because. Um, Mit, uh, our, our good buddy who's a part of the uh, the Blush Boys, you can check out our videos on YouTube. Yeah. Um, there's some Dead by Daylight stuff, some Warzone stuff. Um, Ooh. Stayed up late playing my least favorite game of all Which, time. Dead by uh, Daylight? No, that's uh, I think that's take that's number two. But uh, just because I'm addicted to it does not mean it's not my least favorite. It's, uh, it's Warzone. Uh, Warzone, gotcha. At least with Dead by Daylight, I... It's it was so broken for me at times that it's easy to walk away. Man, it's a perfect game. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what you could possibly be alluding to. Um, well, speak, speaking of perfect games, let's. I'm sorry. I'm are going we gonna talk to about outside. Thomas Grice? Thomas Grice, yeah. <laughs> the the perfect game, like the perfect wrist game that a goalie yeah. can can pitch is uh, not only making it to a shutout, um, it would have been nice if he stopped every shot in the shootout. That would have been pretty sweet. But uh, getting through overtime, making it through the shootout, and your team I, winning one to nothing. Can I say that, Grice, we have to really do our homework for the next episode because I don't – I can't – in recent memory, I can't remember a goalie getting, like, two shutouts in the span of two weeks where the game's going to overtime, and it doesn't feel like he really got enough credit for it. Um. It kind of feels to me like, you know, like a pitcher that would pitch, you know, a nine inning shutout and go, fuck it. I'm going to pitch in the 10th inning, too. And then they give up a run. <laughs> well, he gave up a run. He lost. Like, yeah, but he pitched 10 innings. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know if Grice is getting enough credit for, uh, you know, taking these into OT and we just can't score any damn goals. Um, you know, thank God Gagne uh, stepped up uh, and got us something, you know, in OT and, uh, um, Oh God! What is the word? A shootout? Story? Yeah, shootout. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike stayed up too late too. Playing yeah, we were we were bought a movie projector. We were sitting outside. Uh, oh yeah. What? We were watching uh, Annihilation, the sci-fi movie outside. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, here's here's something for anybody that that I guess isn't giving Grice the credit he deserves. Um, shared by uh, Prashant Dyer, uh, league leaders in goals saved above expected since April first. Uh, Thomas Grice at 12.27, Jordan Bennington, uh, Varlamov, uh, Robin Leonard, uh, <laughs> finishing up the list. Anybody watched right now knows why I'm going to stop the list. Yeah, um, we'll just read the top four on that one. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this is humongous because we spent the whole season, uh, throwing Grice under the bus because he was last in the league for, for goals saved above. He was having a rotten season. It was deserved. Right. 
Yeah. And I, I, I think, Mike, we also spent the last couple of episodes, and I think we have we have new stats that I that I pulled. Um, we we've had our five worst uh, expected goals games, expected goals against games since Merrill and Nemeth were traded. Yeah. Um, so if you go and look at our eight worst games, five of them have happened since that trade. So basically what we're pulling from that and what we've been saying for the last couple of episodes is, holy crap, did Merrill make a huge difference or whatever they've changed with the strategy and uh, the forward lineup changes, <laughs> everything just kind of went to hell when it came to like stopping shots in the middle of the ice because that's how you're going to get that expected goals against number to go way up. And we did it again, Mike. We had another terrible game in regards to expected goals against, but... Grice just, maybe he likes the challenge. Maybe he was bored before. Maybe he was a sleepy boy. And now he's he's got to stay up. I That could totally be, I mean. I, yeah, what, I mean, what um, say? this could be my second time bringing up another sport to explain the sport we're talking about. But it definitely <laughs> feels like uh, just giving him a little bit of space. You know, that was something that Blaschel said. Uh, you know, when Bernier went down, that was when Grice had kind of his worst streak of games where, you know, he yeah. was basically the starter every single night. And now that he can kind of space it out a little bit, Blaschel's like, yeah, kind of feels like a guy who, you know, he's able to stay in his routine again and, you know, get those those breaks when he's with the Islanders. He's, you know, splitting time 50-50. And it feels like that's that's kind of what I, that's what I signed up for, guys. 50-50. I can't do these every single night, you know. <laughs> Papa Tommy needs a little a uh, little nap nap and a snacky. You know, I can't do this every night. I'm getting old. So, yeah. I It looks like the strategy's working, and uh, Iserman's just kind of leaning back. And see, another thing goes to plan. <laughs> I think, too, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and whip this up real quick. Um, this was pointed out by uh, Max Boltman last night. So, but you get, you get, you know, this is on hockey reference. Can I also point out too, before you do your point, it's not mm-hmm. like, it's not like we just found the soft part of the schedule. <laughs> these are the lightning games. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. he's in there right. against the buzzsaw. He's not, you know, it's not Ottawa or something like that. It's, you know, it's not Red Wing scrimmages when he even looked bad in the preseason. <laughs> this is, these are real offensive juggernauts that he's, you know, stepped up to, but yeah, you got a new uh, stat for us. We said just, Bolton. just a little wrinkle in regards to, like we we've anointed Bernier as the savior, which I'm not to, not taking anything away from Bernier. The last few seasons where he's been able to have the numbers he's had with the team that's in front of him, yeah. incredible. He's at a nine twelve save percentage, Mike, with a three point zero three goals against. Thomas Grice has at nine eleven save percentage with two point seven three goals against. So. This last little bit, this little chunk of games, and um, I can't. Mike, did you did you rattle off the the record and the goals against and the save percentage? No, I'll throw it out there. Yeah, so last last ten games, um, and and Prashanth uh, is, is the one who pulled this for us. We were sharing that tweet a second ago. If you guys are watching on YouTube, but it's ten games, including a game where he came in um, halfway through the game. So it's it's five one and three. Uh, so when I say last 10 games and you don't count up to 10 there in the record, that's why uh, 1.51 goals against and a 951 save percentage. Like this is for, for all the reasons that we kept saying, like um, you can't get mad. Like, like we could easily say Grice was number two on the team, but we also kept saying all season, like these are circumstances beyond most players control. And this is going to be weird. Um, but there's also all those reasons. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but, but basically I was going to come to the point that goaltenders and the goaltending job is so fickle and is such a roller coaster ride. Uh, one of the reasons uh, you don't spend a first round pick on a goaltender, um, cause you can just roll into a streak like this, um, and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's just, I think it's one of those things too, where I, we don't have to sit here and say Grice is now the number one goalie. I think we could just like kind of say, all right, maybe Grice wasn't like it, it wasn't that bad as as we painted it to be the first half of the season. I think you were right, Mike. You we we give him uh, a, another goalie to split time with, like he was more successful with uh, when when he was playing with the Islanders, mm-hmm. and things kind of just shook out. I 
I, I still say too, I think there might be an element of him having more work and maybe that's, maybe that's what he likes. Maybe he likes you know, more shots at him, more, yeah. more, more difficult shots. I should say. Um, God, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, because with this team, you know, with Iserman, you know, kind of still preaching that we got to just ice a team. And really, he's, um, you know, Joker, Dark Knight. We're having tryouts, you know. Um, so this goes back to, you know, kind of our idea at the start of the season where we knew Bernier was playing for us, you know, at an MVP level. Um, and then Grice, we just wanted him to come in and kind of relieve Bernier once in a while. And it just seemed like when he was playing so poorly, uh, we – we didn't know what to judge because we're trying to figure out these, you know, which defensemen do we keep? Which of these, you know, forwards do we keep? How do we know the, like the uh, quality of those guys, if the goaltending's kind of in shambles, but now if we can kind of get that control base part of the experiment back in line to be like, okay, so we know our goaltending is kind of back in line. Um, then just, you know, to add the caveat to, we're not expecting Grice to, you know, sport a nine fifty one, you know, in 2022, <laughs> Uh, but just, you know, stability and, you know, something that he's proven on his resume. If he's back in line with that, cool. So we know our goaltending is, you know, about a, realistically about a B, B minus, you know, C plus if you're going to be mean, but I'll say a B. And now we can kind of judge the other part of the team right. um, a little bit more clearly because, you know, we're going to say goaltending's fine. Let's see how you guys actually defend. Let's see how you guys actually, you know, take the puck in the offensive end. So it's, it's. It's nice uh, beyond his personal, uh, you know, rehabilitation of his career here this season, uh, but it's also good for the future of the team, so we can still continue to poke and prod and figure this thing out. Ooh, I like that. Uh, speaking of the future of the team, Mike, is this is this where you wanted us to go? I kind of. Oh, uh, you know it is. <laughs> So, I mean, one of the reasons, Mike, we could be excited about this is, again, we were talking about all the injuries and, uh, and everything going against the roster. And at least I shouldn't say excited, but be happier for Grice and um, kind of see some shining lights from what's going on here at the end of the season. Uh, but we know that Moritz Sider's on his way, Mike. And uh, I, I think it would be fun to take a look at his first goal came in the finals of the SHL playoffs. Uh, so I pulled this up here. Uh, ice hockey gifts. Not as big as AEW, so hopefully they don't uh, destroy our account because yeah, we're sharing just, their yeah. their video of the SHL's video. Of... <laughs> All right. But yeah, no no audio. But uh, thanks thanks Ice Hockey Gifts, uh, huge Red Wings fans there. Uh, so this 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 is going to take a second to uh, to develop here because uh, we're actually going to see Cider come around out in front of the net and uh, and put one away. Boom. Wow, uh, that's so a, that's a that, defenseman, by the way. <laughs> right. I, the what? What I tweeted was that's actually an amazing play and setup. Like that. That is good to see for Cider to come in there. But you you can see that this is all this is all set up. This is this is Cider coming around. Uh, you know, off, off the boards, uh, getting behind the defense. Like this was this was all part of the plan. You know, oh. especially especially when it's Cider, the defenseman, who's making that play. Uh, so, hey, he knows how to hit his mark. Uh, we know he knows how to hit a guy in the face. Uh, so now, yeah, you know, just, just we in player. this town, we love we love uh, Lidstrom, obviously one of the best ever. And, you know, on, on setups like that, I think you're expecting him to just kind of rifle one from the, you know, from the blue line. That was kind of Lidstrom's M.O., uh, but cider kind of swooping in more like a Brent Burns style, like Jesus. And he's going to be what six, six five, six four. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm going to confirm. So confess he's going to be a giant that head. also swoops in and makes yeah. plays at the crease. Um, Here, we're we're really going to be spoiled when this guy. He he. They might not call him up next season, so he could get another good draft pick. Like he might be too good. Yeah, and it's it's six four. His uh, six, four. his his defensive pairing partner. Uh, you can see in the celebration, he's actually taller than Cider. Uh, I don't know who it is, to be completely honest, but I was like, hey, um, why don't we just bring more of them Germans over? Oh, no, I guess, no, he's not German. It's just more Swedes, uh, right? SHL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah, that, was a, that was a miscalculation on that part. All right. So uh, another another element here, another wrinkle with uh, some of the young guys. And uh, I know our, our blogger, Jesse, is excited for this segment. Uh, Kirill Tutayev. 
coming over. Uh, I was I was challenged to not look up how to say his name, Kirill Tutayev. I'm trying trying not to push those uh, syllables, the syllables. I like that. I, like I like that last name. It's very musical. Tut Tut. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you told me not to do it, but it reminds me of the theme song for "I Think You Should Leave." That yeah, 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 yeah. So hopefully he makes it, so we can uh, have more nice Tim Robinson memories from the Netflix hit show. Yeah. Uh, but Matt, he's, uh, he's from Michigan, a five right? nine, hundred and forty five pounder. So it uh, said on Elite Prospects. It said in parentheses, soaking wet, hundred. 145 pounds soaking wet. Um, wow. Oh yeah, well, I said you know, and, I said and rounder, seventh rounder. Yeah. Uh, 190. I mean, when I go to like when I go to buy clothes, I always wonder who is extra small for, and it's for Kirill Tutiyev, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, he's been scoring, right? That's why they're signing him, giving him a chance. Yeah, um, I I said it's prop. So I I mean, Jesus, my favorite word, Mike modicum. I, I did a bit of research. Um, I took a look at, at the uh, the Belarus league and you could, you know, the easy pull is like, okay, he's 12th in the league in scoring, but out of any player in his age group, he is the leading scorer. And that, that seems to be something that would be a little bit more exciting to, to attach ourselves to. And I mean, if you're, if you're a kid who's leading all other kids in scoring in that league, I think it's worth an, an AHL contract that, uh, I don't want to look too much into this. Um, I think there's that element of like, why did this happen? That's probably why this happened. But also, let's take this signing with a big old grain of salt and just kind of go, okay, AHL roster, getting a player. And we'll see what happens. Well, Matt, if he adds 40 pounds, he could be just like one of my heroes, Mr. Tyler Johnson, who I still want us to trade for. So... We could save uh, some cap space and just fill this guy with cheeseburgers, um, Avengers Endgame style, and uh, maybe he'll uh, live up to my boy Tyler. I don't know. Well, I think uh, you know it's worth mentioning too. I I, I was pretty hard on, on not wanting uh, to trade Manta for for Coalfield a, a few weeks ago, uh, yeah. who's you know um, Ooh, he got his for first goal. Four, yeah, he's four foot seven, I think. Uh, <laughs> He's like uh, he's like he's half like an three, Angus Young, three yeah. foot. Yeah, right. He's he's Angus Young size. Yeah, he he put one away. So, um, of course, one one yeah, the one goal means uh, <laughs> I'm eating it right now. Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, I, I guess the, the good thing too, just to point out, I mean, he's, he's got good. a seventh rounder that's coming over um, this quickly. Um, I mean, Mike, we don't. We don't have Mort Sider uh, on the NHL squad right now, and he was a first rounder. Uh, so to say a seventh rounder is already on the AHL squad, it's, it's pretty fun. I mean, we had a Sabrango heading over to AHL too, so that was maybe even a little bit sooner. But again, seventh round pick. It's, 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 it's nice. Yeah, it's I mean, you know, all we hear about is, um, you know, Lucas Raymond, you know, he didn't lead the league in scoring, but gosh, diddly dang dong, you know, he's coming <laughs> along and. He's getting a few points, you know, and he's he's growing now. He's playing against the big boys, playing well, with the big boys now. So I'm just saying, contextually, you can be you can be at least a little ooh, like, oh, what's going on with uh, Tutti? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing it. But yeah, he adds a little beef, you know. We, it, it's gonna be well, interesting. Uh, I, it, beef. Give him a little. He's, all right, a little vegan patties. Lean, lean turkey. You're an impossible burger. He's a He's a lean turkey patty. How about an impossible burger? Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's meat like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a kid. He should be light, right? I mean. Yeah. All right. So, moving on. <laughs> oh, there goes uh we we so we signed one guy to the Griffins, right? All right. So, let's play a game of uh let's sign everybody else, right? Uh Mike, Oof. you and I were Hoping to take a look at all of the Red Wings upcoming restricted free agents and unrestricted free agents. And I, I still like this. Mike, you were tentative to uh, subscribe to the way that we were going to play this game. Uh, but I, I want to rank everybody uh, in, in four different ways. Okay. Here he goes. He's looking at the ceiling. Let, me, let me say that of the four rankings, I would like to throw in a bid that I get to pick the way we um, categorize the fourth grouping. Okay. May, may I do that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Which one is the fourth? He'll find out. 
All right. All right. So basically, got... guys, this is what Matt did. He wants us to name these restricted free agents for the Red Wings, you know, and based on the likelihood of us re-signing them. We're going to give them, instead of like an A or, I don't know, a hot dog ranking, like if you uh, listen to Brothers of Discussion, our wrestling show. No, we're going to do this with uh, Red Wing player names uh, for, for reasons that will become obvious. Now, when we name these players, we're either going to give them a Steve Eiserman ranking, which means they're here to stay for the long haul. My God, not only are we going to sign them long term, they're going to get a job in upper management after they <laughs> hang them up. Pretty, pretty high uh, esteem for these players, which also does include Chris Draper. He was a Steve Eiserman. Who knew? Yeah. All right. The next tier down is here and safe for now. We're going to call that a Dylan Larkin. I mean, pretty close to untouchable, but a real home run deal. We think about it. All right. The next tier down is I'll sign him, but... And that's Anthony Mantha, because as we all know, we thought he was going to be a core member of the group. And uh, he gone. And now, Matt, tier number four is going to be short-lived. And this is the only one I want to name because Matt just put in the word oof. And Matt, you were very quick to remind me that this is not the player's actual first name. And I oh greatly appreciate you uh, mentioning that to me. But the fourth <laughs> tier, because of the short-livedness and the um, homony homonymic quality of his name to this onomatopoeia. Matt, we're going to call this fourth tier the Oof Samuelson tier because they are not here for the long haul. I'm I'm okay with it now. Now, uh, now that you've presented it that way, I'm I'm going to type in Samuelson if I can spell that oof, right. So Oof Samuelson. Oof yeah. Samuelson is is our final ranking for any player that uh we're just uh we're going to drop, it's, right? It's nothing against him. He just has a, a, a name and, that, you know, the homonym again of Oof. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And homonym, Friend of the show, I'm, Ulf Samuelson. We've we've already proved in this episode that we're going to have fun with people's names. Uh, so. So I want to start out with the most interesting name and the name that is easily going to make the most money for the Red Wings, uh, restricted free agent wise. Um, Matt. Jakub Vrana. The Little Darling, who, and I don't know why I just quoted uh, the Zodiac movie, uh, The Little Darlings Bouncing Off the School Bus, uh, but Jakob Vrana. You know man, what? You hadn't finished it yet, so you could have <laughs> you pivoted. You had that opportunity to not finish the quote. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Uh, but man, uh, Well, just... folks, beat the Zodiac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Man, so Jakob Vrana, um, of the four names, ranking them from the bottom at oof, Samuelson, all the way up to that upper echelon, the Steve Eiserman ranking. Where do you have Jakob? Can we can we throw out there too? We have we have a couple of numbers. Uh, we pulled from uh, Evolving Hockey with their contract projections, which we saw last season. Uh, Steve Eiserman did a fantastic job of coming well under. So even with these numbers, there's a great chance that they're even going to be smaller than this. Uh, but we put in uh, the 5.5 million that uh, Evolving Hockey is projecting. Yeah. I, Mike, here and safe for now. He's a Dylan Larkin, for sure. I don't think it's uh, as bad as Anthony Manta with the "I'll sign him," but I think this is this is going to be him a year closer to what the whole core is going to be. And um, I mean, you can't be upset with his with his production so far. And I I, I like it. I, I'm going to give him a Dylan Larkin here and safe for now. I'm going to say that Steve is such a wily rascal. I'm going to give this one on Anthony Manta because if Ooh. Rana at some point, I think he's going to get signed, but if right, we've already seen it, it's, it's already in the proofs of the pudding. Um, if some deal like Vrana comes along, you know, and we get even more draft picks for another similarly skilled player, Iserman will do it. And, you know, we always get seduced by this, Matt. We always get seduced by, um, yeah, like a like a miracle game. We had it for Mantha for a while. Man, remember when he had a four goal game? And so Jakob Rana in the exact same uh procedure also has a four goal game. <laughs> we're like, man, just think of the possibilities. And Rana, we're you know, he's still got that new toy, you know, that new car smell. Uh yeah. but you know, uh, you know, we can we can still be patient. I, I don't know if that five and a half mil is is quite what he should be making at this juncture. Uh, you know, he had a good game. 
he had a, cu- a couple others, but uh, let's you know pump the brakes on a you know six years, sixty million. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm gonna say I'll sign him, but we'll keep an eye out for that one. Now, right. Matt, he's a, a featured product on the shop page for the Red Wings rant. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna retire his number. Matt's Adam Ernie. Um, can I just throw in real quick? I, based on the um, <laughs> Based on yeah. the performance, based on the way I want to sell more of these shirts, I had him at three and a half mil, and oh. yeah, the projection is all all the way down to one point seven uh, for the Red Wings. I think number three score goal scorer at this point in the season. Um, but Matt, where do you rank him on the Iserman to oof Samuelson? I'm a, I'm gonna call him an Anthony Mantha. He's an all side of butt. Um, I, I I think this will this will be something where Iserman you know brought he brought this guy over you know from from the Lightning. So I I think he he likes what he sees and he's definitely ticked up production wise. So it's pretty hard to make the argument that you know if we we're gonna if we we're gonna bring him over without this production, what do we miss? You know what what needs to change for him to to keep a contract. And he, he's still young. So, yeah, I, I, he's definitely getting – I think he's definitely getting a contract. Uh, there's definitely a, a negotiation happening. Um, so, yeah, give me the Anthony Mantha. This, for me, Matt, is a Larkin. Uh, this is one of Iserman's Whoa. boys. I think he's I loved like him it. his whole career. Um, I think he wants to keep this guy around for the long haul, and I think he's going to sign him a little bit under market value for a longer-term deal. And make Ernie a Red Wing for the foreseeable future. So I I don't see them moving him. I think he's most valuable here. I think Ernie's going to realize it. And yeah, go ahead, put that in the record books, Matt. Boom. Here's a really tough one, uh, Rasmussen. I I don't know. It's this might get a little redundant because I, I think we're just going to keep throwing out the same two over and over and over. Uh, I I'm just going to say I'll sign him, but he's an Anthony Mantha. I I, I think. This is something where he they're fine giving him more chances, but I, I don't know if there's enough there that you have you have to say that this guy's for sure a part of the future core. Um, I mean, a year ago we were saying, oh my God, we have no centers in the pipeline. So, uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, let's see where this goes. We, we've talked about his um, his play is getting better, uh, but I think we need to see that continue to grow. So. Yeah, he's getting – he'll get it. He'll get another year, but uh, I, I think it's a short leash. This is a tough one for me. Um, Are you going to oof? I th- I, I'm trying to talk myself out of oof. I just – it's gonna he's, be too, tough he's too he's young to give all... up on, but I, I know how underwhelmed Iserman is by people that he did not draft, right? It'll be um, tough though with with an RFA. It could be something you know, like we could we could sit here and say he's going to be Bertuzzi. Yeah, I, go to arbitration. I think he's he's kind of between a math and an oof. Um, but knowing that you know it's a restricted free agent, knowing his youth, knowing his size, which obviously Iserman is really starting to value uh, big boys out there. Um, yeah, he's going to be a he's going to be a Manta. He's he's going to get a contract. Um, there's there's no doubt about that, but I don't know. I don't know. It's it's like the opposite of the Ernie effect, where I could feel Ernie being around forever and Iserman just kind of being like, oh, I didn't pick him. So, Matt, let's go to another tough one of Genny Svechnikov. Well, we talked earlier about uh, the, the situation with uh, Seattle a couple episodes ago and how it's been projected that Svech might not be necessarily up to us or Steve. Uh, it could just be the fact that there's a new team coming in and Svetch will be gone for that reason. Um, but I, I'm going to say I'll, I'll sign him, but uh, we liked how he looked right at the, the start of his call up. Um, he has, he certainly has not held on to that production level. Uh, that's not to say he's looked terrible, but um, yeah, I think you keep him at arm's length. I, I don't think anybody should be going out buying a bunch of Svetch and jerseys right now. So, yeah, I'll, I'll sign him, but he's an Anthony Manta. I'm giving this an oof. Um, oof. I know he's got the youth, but I, you know, I think we got enough wings, you know, coming up the pipeline that, you know, Steve will kind of see Somebody's what he can get go. for this guy. And he'll, this like is that. where he'll try and restock that uh, empty seventh round slot uh, for this 2021. It, he's worth more than a seventh round, right? But, um, you- 
you're, I like that because you think he's if if Steve's projecting. This smells to me like one of those guys draft. that, yeah, he wants to test out somebody else's like high round, you know, well, maybe underperforming early. I know, pick. I know, we don't want to get into this right now, but what what if Steve is is thinking this guy's on the trade block and he's already hit the waiver wire a couple times? Do you do you just hang on to him to just say, all right, we we're already willing to let this guy go. Let's not put anybody else. In Seattle's way, let's just make it fetch. Like, do you hang on to him for that reason? I don't think. I think if we're going to get plundered by, you know, when we get plundered by Seattle, it's not going to be fetch. Okay. I think that they're they're going to see some some bigger fish to fry. Um, you think maybe I, oh I get okay so you're you're thinking like a uh, conversation with Steve's gonna happen and some trades are going down <sighs> maybe all right we gotta keep moving I don't yeah, know. we gotta, we gotta along this here yeah, we'll try right. to do these a little bit quicker Christian right, Juice, juice. Oof. yeah <laughs> oof. I'm I'm going to Oof Samuelson yeah I'm going uh, to Oof as well Double not much oof. to explain there I mean it, it's hard for him to crack the lineup consistently and he's uh, is- he's the Leopold Statch uh, Butters from South Park he's uh, quite the little void filler. Uh, but we got a bunch of defensemen coming up soon and, you know, Christian will just be here and, you know, in case of emergency and there's a bunch of boo-boos, we'll, you know, look into doing something with this guy. I don't know why I turned into Beetlejuice there. Oh, goddamn. Uh, same <laughs> um, but man, Dennis Klausky. Klausky, uh, the guy who cannot stay on the main roster. Um, this is certainly a, an Anthony Manta. I'll sign him, but I mean, this is a short leash if I ever saw one. They absolutely, every time this guy's in the news, they just say his offense, but I mean, he's literally almost the name of the category. Uh, so this is easily a man <laughs> for me. He's He's got too much offensive skill defensively, you know, to give up on. And it might be interesting to see him, you know, kind of play with uh, Cider on the power play. That, that, that'd be kind of, that'd be kind of fascinating. We could finally do two defensemen you know, in uh, three forwards, just like the video game forces you to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, give me an all sign and butt. Matt Gustav Lindstrom. I'm going to gonna say here and say for now, I'm, I'm actually going to put Lindstrom as a Larkin because I think his contract's going to be super reasonable for a while. And uh, it, he's not, we're not picking him up and going, he's a top pair. I think you could pick up a guy, say he's a bottom pair and still say he's pretty safe for a while. Uh, so I, I, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, I like it. I'm, I'm going to say let's let's fix it up. Let's stop saying everybody's Samantha, and I'll, I'll make him a Larkin. I'm going to say uh, that's probably irresponsible of me. I'm going to say Amantha. Um, we'll wait till he sees a little bit more for me to bump him up to a Larkin. But Matt, here's an here's, interesting here's, one. Yeah. We've got a big boy now. We got uh, Heronic. Uh, which evolving hockey says is going to be close to four mil a year. I, I think Ooh. that's super reasonable considering we have around what, what did we say forty eight million in cap space for next year. So we, th- we yeah. think we can afford this. Uh, but yeah, Philip Aronic. This is a Dylan Larkin for me. This is here and safe for now. Matt, I'm going upper echelon. I think this, oh could, be, this is going to be an Iserman. Um, it's nice. not that he's, it's not that he's necessarily like Iserman talented, but yeah. They really appreciate everything this guy's done. Um, I, I think they're going to give him, you know, one of those uh, like mortgage deals, one of those coffin deals where we're going to bury you at center ice when you're dead uh, because of the minutes he's playing for this, you know, rotten era in Red Wing hockey. Um, you know, they love they love putting this guy out there. You know, they love featuring him as a top defenseman. Um yeah, I, I really think he's going to be here for the long haul. And I, I don't see, you know, a, a move on the horizon for this guy. Um, he's going to be a running for a very long time. Matt, here comes one of the more controversial ones. And yeah. probably a guy we could uh, rename one of these categories with. Matt, don't call him Todd. It's Tyler Bertuzzi. <laughs> he's got to be an Anthony Mantha, right? Like, you don't go to arbitration because... And I know people always say, don't look too much into it, but... I, it happened. And other guys don't go to arbitration. So, I mean, the hearing actually happened. There's a huge disconnect between value of, of what he sees himself valued at and what Steve saw. And now he was injured for the whole season. And that even that situation looked weird. So, I, yeah, Anthony Mantha all the way for, for Tyler Bertuzzi. I'll sign him, but shortly. It's tough because it's a hybrid of the bottom two options. Because um, I, I don't think he's going to be part of the Red Wing Corps. Um, 
It definitely feels like uh, what they're going to try to do is the same thing they did with Mantha, where you know they gave him the long term deal last year, and um, you know they tried to see what they could, what kind of production they could get out of him. Um, and then this year, you know, he was he was healthy for a stretch, and they said, all right, this is the time to cash in. So I feel like they're going to give him a manageable, you know, maybe two or three year deal, and then try to trade him once he's healthy, establishes himself, gets some points on the stat sheet, um, you know, gets his value up, and then see what kind of draft picks we can get for Bertuzzi. Um, yeah. You know, a skating Bertuzzi instead of an injured one. Um, but yeah, they're estimated three three three. Um, which is lower than than what he got, and a year ago he was estimated at five million. So they scaled it back. I mean, if if Tyler is going to be having this conversation with Steve and getting closer to his prime years, and then saying, "All right, I guess I'm taking a pay cut from last year," that that's rough. Like, if anything, I would have I would still imagine something at least at his number this past season. But I I would have guessed it would be it would be higher. He, he wasn't terrible while he was out there. He was he was our top point per uh point per sixty guy. Yeah, yeah. I, this is this is probably the the toughest one I'd say Bertuzzi. Um, but uh, yeah, we got There's our boy. Uh, we got uh Brome. Uh, Brome. <laughs> Brome. Well, I keep you know in Dearborn. There's Brome Burger, and so every oh, time man. I see that, I want to go get a Brome Burger. Um. But yeah, I had him estimated at 950k. What was our uh, reference point for these numbers, Matt? Uh, where are we getting it from? Evolving uh, hockey. Oh, evolving hockey. Yeah, and they had him down at 850k, which I forgot we could go that low. So I apologize for my estimated uh, average annual value for this we, uh, contract. They they went lower on some folks, uh, but yeah, Woo! we can we can race through these these last four. Yeah. Uh, Pro um, May, he's, I'll he's, sign him. He'll, he's I'll dead. sign him, but I, I'm going to give him an oof. Uh, I'm Chase think, Pearson, Matt. Oof. <laughs> Are you in on Chase Pearson? I'll sign him, but because the the contract will be low. Uh, I mean, short leash for for a young guy. Uh, right. Hayden Verbeek, Mister Family Picnic himself, Matt. Company oof. Picnic. Yeah, I want to say oof. <laughs> I, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know how much longer this lasts. Um, I'm going to say here to stay for the long haul. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> they don't want to upset Pat Verbeek at this juncture. Uh, Steve does not want that phone call. Oh. And then uh, Giovanni Smith here. I, this is certainly an all sign him, but um, at 850 coming from uh, Evolving Hockey. They have not expressed the commitment that we feel he should be getting. Um, right. we've had a lot of, uh, friends of the show, you know, our Ken Cal's our Darren McCarty's come on and agree. Why isn't there more Giovanni Smith? Uh, we like him on this show, but they don't like playing him. They barely like putting him on the taxi squad. Matt, unfortunately, this is an oof. I, it's not a deserved oof, but it's an oof nonetheless. Yep. Um, well, that wraps up the restricted free agents, Mike. I think we do have an easier game to play with the unrestricted free agents. But just to kind of look at it, I think our, our big Yeah, we can are, punt that are, one till are, next time. Yeah. Oh, you got to go? All righty. Uh, well, we're at 44 minutes on this one. All right. Well, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Jakob then and Philip Aronik, um Why did I call him Aronik? Aronik, uh are, are two big boys. Uh, get Get close to above the Dylan Larkin uh, and Mikey Pictoronic to just be a, a Steve Eiserman. So I think that's that's pretty obvious. Um, or no, you 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 gave Verona and uh, Anthony Mantha score. All right, yeah. um, everybody, uh, check out. Uh, we also got uh, Jesse Stotts at bodpodcast.com slash Red Wings Rant. He he gave us a little article on. Um, his his thoughts not only on who he wants to keep, uh, he he's ranked everybody as uh, definitely a keeper, gonna think about it and and gone. And he's got all the RFAs and UFAs, and he's got his own calculations for uh, for salary in there as well. Uh, so go check that out again. And uh, if you guys do head over to bodpodcast.com on the homepage is our shop button. You can get uh, our retire seventy three as we talked about. It's, uh, He's going to be an all side him butt, or uh, he's safe, safe for now. Um, but also, we have our uh, another Iser plan fleece, fleece, which uh, hope you guys will check out again. That's bodpodcast.com, and just click on the shop button on that homepage, and you'll see all that fun stuff. 
Uh, but yeah, follow us at BOD Hockey and uh, at Brothers underscore, uh, that's on Twitter, and at Brothers underscore of underscore discussion on uh, Instagram. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, we'd appreciate that. Subscribe uh, right underneath uh, my good brother Mike there. It's a button right underneath him. There it is. Yep. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Have a good one. Bye.